as our Lenten journey brings us to this third Sunday, I just wanted to first acknowledge the different thoughts and emotions that everyone may be experiencing as we go through the current challenges brought by the coronavirus uh, situation. I recognize that there may be quite a lot of anxiety and worry at this time, and especially from our brothers and sisters who may be more vulnerable because of their health. And at the same time, I recognize that some may be feeling a bit, a bit overwhelmed by the unrest and from the precautions that they may be taking away some of the normalcy of, of everyday life. And for those who may be economically affected, you know, we're all in one way or another affected by it. We cannot ignore it. Yet in the midst of all that's happening, we must allow ourselves as a people of faith to see and experience these challenges above all as followers of Jesus Christ and to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I went through a, a couple drafts as I was preparing my homily for this weekend. And the more I reflected and prayed with the Sunday's readings, and at the same time as the news and updates kept coming in this week, by God's grace, I, I realized how, how God's word truly offers us his consolation to, to accompany us in this difficulty. It's as if these readings couldn't have come at a better time. In the first reading of, from Exodus, we heard once again about the historic journey of the Israelites. You know, this journey which symbolize the journey of the people of God today. As they in the desert strove to follow God in the midst of, of their obstacles and, and challenges, so too the people of God today who strive to follow God in the midst of our modern obstacles and challenges, you know, find ourselves uh, being tested. And in that reading, we heard about confusion and unrest among God's people, finding themselves without water in the desert, they worried. They worried about themselves. They worried about their, their children and their loved ones. They worried about, about their livestock, their livelihood. To their eyes and to the eyes of the world, they were doomed. Their faith was affected and there was quarreling, loss of confidence. And he expressed all of these concerns to, to their leader, to Moses. And Moses brought them up to God. The most important part of that reading is that even though they were testing, you know, they were put in a, in a place of contention, God who delivered them assured them that he's with them. God always heard their prayers and he didn't let them succumb to their fears nor their thirsts. And the heart of the issue for us today as a people of faith is in how we confront the question that the Israelites posed at the end of the reading. Is the Lord in our midst or not? The Psalm 
offers us a tender reminder that we are his people, the flock he guides. And it is precisely in times like this that we must open ourselves even more to his guidance and to remember that panic and fear do not come from God, but rather calm and hope do. And as God speaks to us through his word and also through our pastors, even through the situation and also through the instructions that were given by legitimate authorities, let us harden not our hearts. And let us strive rather to continue to seek his peace. St. Paul tells us, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that peace, hope. A hope which does not disappoint. The Sunday Jesus speaks through us, to us, through that very beautiful gospel reading of the Samaritan woman at the well. We heard how she went to draw water alone and at the strange time of the day, at noon. And you may have heard before that this tells us that she's an outcast. She's one whose way of life whose sins and shame have isolated her from her community. And she comes face to face with that reality when she comes face to face with Jesus who meets her at the well, who's waiting for her at the well. And yet that encounter is one of tenderness. Jesus knows her intimately as Jesus knows each and every one of us intimately. Jesus knows her story as Jesus knows all of our stories, even the parts which we are not proud of. And yet Jesus thirsted for that woman. That is, he desired to bring her out of her way of life, which was excluding her from her community, which was keeping her from truly living and thriving, not in thirst, but in freedom. And he offers her new life as Jesus continues to offer us today new and everlasting life in him. This is a message that we cannot allow to be drowned out and lost in the unrest that we currently face. Jesus knows intimately about our worries in this world, and yet he sees what we cannot see on our own, the bigger picture of eternity, of heaven, of eternal life, which is our goal. And yet he meets us at our thirst. He calls us to conversion and offers us true living water to quench those deep thirsts. What are those thirsts, by the way? And perhaps in the light of these challenging moments, Perhaps right now those thirsts may be the thirst for peace of mind in the midst of anxiety, the thirst for clarity in the midst of uncertainty, a thirst for security and safety in the midst of threat, a thirst for calm in the midst of unrest. These are real thirsts that are reflective of and are rooted in the deepest, the deepest, most profoundest thirsts of our soul for true purpose, 
for true meaning and for true lasting fulfillment. As St. John Paul II once said, every human life is a question. Jesus Christ is the answer. And so although we may have to be physically distant from each other for now, even though we may not be encouraged to shake hands and, and, and hug and whatnot, now is a time and opportunity to be in closer unity and solidarity, especially by prayers and especially by our witness that God indeed the Lord indeed is in our midst. Let us therefore continue in this time of Lent with hope and confidence, with continued turning away from our sins and turning towards God. And let us refresh ourselves and our trust in Him. For we are His people, the flock He guides.